So spring is almost here and you know what that means. That means a whole bunch of macro opportunities. So in this video, I'm going to compare two focus stacking softwares, Photoshop and Helicon Focus to see which one is better because I really want to up my game in macro photography this time around. So let's go. So here I've prepared two scenarios. One is a nature scenario where I was photographing some beautiful spring flowers. And the second scenario is a little bit more sterile where I was photographing some money because money is such a big topic currently in the world. So, I mean, it's always a topic. Anyway, we need money, so might as well photograph some euros. So I have a few images where I was shifting the focal plane from the foreground all the way to the background. Like you can see here, I was doing this handheld, so this is why you know the images are not really aligned. So let's first start with the money focus stack. I'm going to choose these sets of images. Now these are raw files from my Sony Alpha 7 III, and I am currently in Lightroom, so I will right click, I will go to edit in, and here open as layers in Photoshop. Now pay attention how long this is going to take because Photoshop is now going to be opened and then all the photographs, all the raw files will be imported as layers, which then I will have to align and then focus tag together. Now I do have to mention that I am working on a workstation laptop with 64 gigabytes of RAM and a RTX Quadro 5000 graphics card with I think it has 16 gigs of VRAM or maybe it's, it's 64, I don't know. Like a really powerful computer. It is a PC, it's not a Mac, but you can see how long this is taking. Just to import some raw files and these are compressed raw files. Now these are just the 19 raw files. I can't imagine if I would have more than 19, but you know, this is how it works. So all the layers are here. I'm going to select the first one, shift select the last one. So I select all of them. Then typically we go under edit, we go under auto align, and I'm just going to use this setting. So I'm gonna click okay. And now Photoshop is going to auto align the frames, which again takes a little bit of time. As you can probably tell, I'm really emphasizing on the whole, you know, how long it takes for Photoshop to do this. But yeah, you now 24 megapixel images. If these were like 60 megapixel images, that would be even longer. And of course I could always work with JPEG files. That would be a little faster, but anyway, so, here we are aligned. Now you can see how much the frames were shifted left and right. So for this reason, I'm going to press C and I'm going to crop in to about like this. So just where I have the frames all in because here on the outer edges, you can see that the frames were shifted and you can see that. So I'm going to delete everything outside my crop just to save space and, and energy. So here are the images auto aligned and now I'm going to with all of them selected, go under edit, auto blend and I'm going to use these settings. So stack images, seamless tone and colors and content aware fill transparent areas. This is not needed because I've cropped the image in. So let's press okay. And now Photoshop is going to focus stack everything. Typically Photoshop does this really good. I find it to be really good. But if there's any you know, mistakes, any artifacts, it's really hard to fix them in Photoshop. At least I have a really hard time. Now, if you've never done this, you'll see that every single layer has its own mask. So if I turn everything off, you can see this is one layer, the second layer, the third layer, and only the parts of the frame which Photoshop found to be sharp or sharp enough or displayed here, so one on top of the other. And at first glance, Photoshop did a really good job. Everything is now in focus, but if I start zooming in, you can see here that there are some, some artifacts. So because the images were not aligned when I was photographing them, you can see that there was some weird thing happening and it's really hard to fix this. Now, one way to be to actually merge all the layers into one layer and then just clone stamp parts from here in here, so like this. 
for instance. And this is not really accurate because I'm just copying other parts of the photograph to you know fill in the blanks on some other parts of the photograph. So it is just typical clone stamping. And that's pretty much the only way that I find that you can do this in Photoshop. Now again, in this example, the photograph actually looks quite amazing. So now let me show you how this is done with Helicon Focus. And just to be clear, this is not a sponsored video, neither from Adobe or from Helicon or whatever company makes that software. I'm just very excited to test out both and see which one I will be using in the future. Again, I will start from Lightroom with all of these frames still selected. I will right click and then go to export. And here I have Helicon Focus. I have two options, the TIFF or the DNG. This one is more accurate because it retains the raw data and the TIFF is just really fast and it still retains a whole bunch of data. So let's try this one. Now Photoshop will export all of the 19 frames into TIFF files and then Helicon will open and import all of those photographs in. And you will see how fast this actually happens. Exports done and photographs are instantly imported. So I have here the Helicon software, I have all of the layers, I can click through them, I can choose which ones I want to use, here I will use all of them. And well, let's see a preview of how this works. So preview, bam, done. <laughs> now this is just a preview, but I can choose three methods. So method A, method B or method C. I find for these types of photographs, method B is the best one. You can really just choose which one you want and then just click render. Bam, we're done. The photo on the right, right over here, is the photo that is, well, focus tagged. So all I have to do now is just go you know, save, save and export as whatever file I want. So a TIFF, a JPEG, a DNG, you know, for further editing. And the photograph will then be automatically imported back into Lightroom. Just like if I save the file with Photoshop and it gets imported back into Lightroom, with Helicon Focus, it works the same way. You know, but how do we address any issues? Well, here, you know, this part has been, you know, stacked much better and I can go to retouching and I can use F9 to load the image underneath. So right here, if I press F9, you will see that this image was used to do this. And I can change the brush size and I can just really brush in the details. And right here, F9, and I'm going to brush in the details here. So it's really, really easy to do, to do this because I don't have to figure out which photo I want to make visible and which photo I have to hide in order to fix everything. You just press F9 and the underneath photo loads and well, you just brush in the details. And these are the actual details. I'm not copying a different part of the photograph and just putting it somewhere else, kind of baking the whole image. So for this reason, I mean, Helicon focus is like unbelievable. It does a really good job at focus stacking and it's ridiculously fast. So yeah, this is why I'm considering you know, using this software in the future. And here are the examples with the flowers, one time focus stack with Photoshop, exactly the same way as I showed you. And then the second time focus stacked with Helicon focus. Again, the same way as you saw in this video. So, you know, it's in both cases, it's a very similar result. It's just that Helicon Focus is so much faster. So yeah, anyway, I hope you guys enjoy this video. I hope you've learned something new. You will find the link to Helicon Focus down in the description. You get a 30 day free trial. It's what I'm using as well but I'm actually considering on buying it after the trial period is over because it's, it's really cool. So links down in the description. If you have any comments or questions, also leave that down in the comment section and consider subscribing to the channel if you've enjoyed this video. You're really helping me out a lot this way and also by pressing the like button. Everything's for free, so subscribe and get on the Miro Live Through a Lens video tutorial photography wagon. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in this video. Bye-bye.